from churches that began in living rooms and compounds of members to the Kokwasi Holy Ghost Terrace through the hard benches and the palm branch tents of Easter and Christmas conventions amidst banjus and kunkes, we have come to a place where we can declare one generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. The congregation that was once labelled unschooled, uncouth, unpolished and poor have become a mighty tree whose roots and branches are providing nourishment and shade for the nations. Thank God for how far he has brought us. Thank you for your contribution to this great commission and for your heart and love for missions work. We want to bless God that Makion's Missions Week is here with us again. To us, it is the mother of all weeks, the Machion's Missions Week. We want to thank God for his enabling grace for the missions enterprise of the Church of Pentecost. We see the hand of God in our day-to-day -day operations and activities. As at the end of December 31st, 2022, the Church of Pentecost had presence in 151 countries including Ghana and now the Lord through yielded vessels is repositioning local churches for maximum impacts the Church of Pentecost is a glorious church a success story an enviable brand the Church of Pentecost possessing the nations transforming lives and dispersing darkness with light but will the Lord replicate the success story of the Church of Pentacles in Ghana in the other nations also? I strongly believe that God is really replicating what he led Makion and our forebears to do in Ghana. Why do I say so? In many of these churches that we have um, indigenous church members, the Holy Spirit has begun birthing out songs from their own mother tongue, their own rhythms. Indigenous songs, indigenous moves, indigenous worship. So far, when we talk about Church of Pentecost and missions, we have done very well because we have more indigenous churches than non indigenous churches, especially in Africa and in most parts of, of the world. If you go to India, uh, it's more indigenous, uh, Chile, Argentina, a lot of them are Argentines. Indonesia is purely indigenous. India is purely indigenous. Pakistan is purely indigenous. Um, Japanese assembly. We were trained to own the church. When you see a Church of Pentecost member in Malawi, they don't look at it from the perspective of a Church of Pentecost that came from Ghana. No. They look at the Church of Pentecost as their own church. Hey, hey, hey. 
We don't want to send the gospel out as Ghana Church. We are sending the gospel as God who has sent us, touching every country, every color. The founder of the Church of Pentecost came. He didn't bring his culture to Ghana. He let the gospel speak to our culture. So now that we have been intentional, trying to accept the various cultures and ministering the gospel through that, I think God will do more than what he did with Ghana. The future of the church is always brighter than now because the church is founded on Christ and nothing that is founded on Christ will go rotten, will go bad, will retrogress, no. There has to be a future, so it just depends on whether it's a good one or a bad one. But in this situation, I think it's a good future because, well, over the last few years, the church has really been growing, right? And then this theme that is repositioning the local churches for maximum impact in the nations is basically summing everything up because the only thing that we need to do now is to change a few things in the local churches that will really make a maximum impact as the theme says like for example our youth for example they're going to be very active and they're going to try their best to make this church more and more exposed as long as we follow the spirit's instruction as long as we live by the scriptures and make it our rule the Church of Pentecost will see greater heights in future. So the church, uh, for me, I see a much more glorious church uh, in future, even than now. The church as an army is moving on, but it does not move without direction. The captain has a plan for every generation. In our days, he is leading us to plant more local churches in the cities. He is planting and repositioning local churches in the cities to be multinational, multicultural, multiracial and sustainable. He is bringing nations together and raising strategic leaders who will influence their cultures and teach men to live by the values and principles of our glorious kingdom. In this area, in this age, the Lord has laid on leadership's heart that the Church of Pentecost, we need to pursue a multicultural, multiracial, multinational church in all our external branches. Therefore, we have prayed and the results are amazing. Our challenge was in the Western world, how to break through uh, to have the indigenous come on board. So by the grace of God, God is leading us by His Spirit. The city church is trying to solve the problem. And so the city church is winning whosoever. The city church is a second kind of generation of the PIWC. It's more about winning souls, soul winning, looking at winning everyone that um, they can lay hands on. So the city check is more cross-culture than the PIWC. And so if you go to Amsterdam for one, uh, you have a lot of nationalities in the church. By the grace of God, another birth took place in the Netherlands, Harbour City Church is a multicultural, multiracial, multinational assembly of the Church of Pentecost located in the prime and affluent part of the city of Rotterdam. Our church in Cyprus has about 18 nationalities in the church. As a church, we have made missions work our mission. Outreach and soul winning is at the heart of our congregation. We want everyone to know God and we are eager to make maximum impact in Cyprus. A cross-cultural service is very, very important to us 
because this is the future. We are very, very intentional about it. We want to make the disciples. Our vision is to become a community of all nations and growing disciples of Jesus Christ. When we move in obedience, we move into miracles, open doors, and ready fields waiting for the harvest. Our brothers in the Americas went to Panama, and Panama is like a harbor, city and nation for people from the Americas and many others in the Caribbean. And we didn't know anybody. We didn't have contacts. But once they got to Panama, the very first person they saw and they contacted, the person happened to be a lawyer and the person offered all the services needed for the church to be registered in Panama and even showed the church where we could fellowship. And we saw this as the hand of the Lord. It was very divine. So now when we are moving to nations, we really don't take into account whether we have contacts or not. We move by faith. We have also introduced Bensa International. And they are sending out young missionaries. Two young men went to Indonesia and they opened up the place. When we got to Indonesia, we were praying in our room, trying to find means how the message can be sent. We had a call one day to go and pray for a woman. She had been paralyzed for a year and a half. As we were praying for the woman, the family members in the house were streaming live on Facebook. The woman got healed. Their friends and their colleagues following them on Facebook got to see the video. And they also shared it on their WhatsApp status. And others also got in touch with the video. And they started calling us. Let's come and pray for them. Let's come and pray for them. And that was how the work began in the land of Indonesia through Facebook and WhatsApp to the Lord's glory. We also encountered someone who shared a vision with us that before we even came to Indonesia, God revealed to her that uh, two people were actually coming from a foreign nation to come and preach the word of God and do the work of God there. And the vision was warning the people that when we come, they should accept us, even though the ministry will, will look small, but it will grow and it will flourish. City Church. So many doors were closed to us. We were declined by several halls. Averagely, we would have to pay about two to four thousand euros a week for just a few hours. But when all hope seemed to be lost, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, made a way. God gave Harbor City Church a place of worship. Oh, hallelujah! Great things he has done. Greater he will do. This year we got to Luxembourg three months ago and already we see the move of the Spirit. As I speak to you now, um, we already have nine nations present at church. Glory be to the Lord God Almighty who is doing this amazing work. In October 2022, we had the Dodoma for Christ crusade. And out of the souls that were won from that crusade, we have started the Dodoma City Church. Now we had to get them a prime location that could be able to house that vision. And God being so good, God led us to this property, which is in a very prime area in the new Dodoma, which is the capital of Tanzania. Behind me is the University of Dodoma, which is the largest university in Tanzania. And then also we have the new gated community that has been built by the government. Over 350 housing units which are yet to be inhabited. Right in front of it, God gave us this place. Now surrounding us are government agencies that are going to be built in the few years to come. There is a hospital next to us and there are many state agencies here. This land is 4,017 square meters. And by the grace of God, when we 
uh, got wind of this land and we made the move. God helped us with a donation from Elder Eric and Mrs. Adai from the Mamprobi Central Assembly, uh, who donated money and part of that money has been used to acquire this land. Um, the land cost us uh, some $22,000. This place was originally zoned for a school. And so we have decided to keep the idea of the school within the Dodoma City Church vision so that this place will become the Pentecost Mission Center Dodoma, which will house both the International School and the Dodoma City Church. We see that in the years to come, this place is going to be um, an area that would house you know, middle class and upper class um, persons in society. And the Dodoma City Church would just be the right place for them to fellowship. Bringing the church to the city centre is expensive. And so that is why maybe our, our forebears were not able to move into the city centre right away. Not that they didn't want to, not that they didn't know the biblical strategy. They knew that you need money to move to the city centre. But now we are determined to move to the city centre. So we will need your support. Because renting a place in the city is expensive. But that is where the gospel has to be, the heart of the city so that from the city we can now move into the hinterlands. So we will need you to strengthen us by giving us much more money and encourage us to keep planting the churches in the city. The Lord's results are waiting for our obedience. It calls for huge financial sacrifices, but God is moving because he knows he can rely on us. Better than structures, better than chapels, are the lives that are being transformed across the world through the work of missions. I believe in my country, the Church of Pentecost is the answer to Matthew 9.38. Many children do not get the opportunity to study properly because of poverty and many other reasons. Pentecost Seed School is one of the dream projects of the Church of Pentecost Bangladesh to address this problem. My daughter Jarnath goes to Pentecost Seed School. Teachers take good care of the student. Thank God for the church because without the church, I wouldn't know who God was or who God is deep as how I do now. PIWC Lishwe has done a lot for me. In Maasai land, before the gospel came, we had idols. Idols, these are some of the things that were being worshipped. Uh, and one of the major idols was cows. Based on colors, the strips, the color the calf is born with. So uh, if a cow is born with this color, with this strip, with this uh, shape of horn, with this type of horn, with this type of uh, skin, then it was being worshipped. You don't sell that. Even if you have any challenge, you need money, you want to educate your child, you don't sell to educate. Because this is an idol, we worship it. It has to stay there until it dies at the home seed and slaughtered and eaten meat. So that was also another idol. But when Christ came, every cow now is a cow. And then there was also witchcraft. So each generation, each um, generation would give 49 cows to a witch so that you are blessed, so that you don't die early, so that you get fame as that generation. So the more the cows you give to that witch, the more you live. But now when Christ came, uh, we dedicate children, we baptize in in mass water, we baptize in the Holy Spirit, and the more you have the Spirit, the more you know you will live long. Every day I have been a drunkard, but today I have done away with, with Pombe. I am very much thankful for the pastor. When we met with him, and he told me more about God, 
I joined and today I am very much happy. Then I congratulate my pastor. Myself, I'm from a Christian family. My mom prays a lot, but I was not into that until when God just called, him, called me by myself. And I, this, I accepted the calling. So through me, I can change the guys who are like me by preaching the word, talking to them the same way the word came into me. Um, now that I'm aware that Christ is the center of my life, in all my actions and ev in everything I do, I'm going to make sure that his name will be glorified and thus it will be able to bring others and attract others into Christianity. Because of your sacrifice, you have become a solution in countries you have not visited. And now, see what the Lord is doing gathering a huge army of young people across the nations. In front of them is a fiery group of missionaries leading the army into unprecedented victories. They are our greatest resource. We need to make space for the young people in the church. We have to see them preach. We have to see them lead worship. We have to see them lead the evangelistic campaigns. When we unleash them, they will find some excitement in the work they do. And that will also help them to be able to expand their energy well. They are a huge resource. They are a huge potential to us. And we want to encourage parents, leaders to continue to pay particular attention to our young people. I see the youth and children in Tanzania as yearning for something new. Now they are there, they are in their numbers, they have their strength, they have their energy, they are excited about the church. My appeal to all leaders, pastors, and officers of the church is to give space for the young people because they are our future. We need to budget for their training. We need to budget and support them in any way that we can. All the things we have done 
to boost the confidence of the youth as we transition into the future as far as leadership is concerned. It's one, when we're creating the areas, about 60% of the leadership position. In fact, we gave position for everything as far as the vision 2023 schools outreach, this, that, that. We created all at that level. And 60% of the positions were given to the youth. We have called the young people now into ministry. Uh, one thing that I'm really happy of is that uh, our presiding elder for the for the PIWC is a young man like me. So when I see him, I get encouraged. And me, me too, I'm, I'm also encouraged that one day uh, I'll not be just uh, a keyboardist or a musician, but I'll be past that and I'll be a minister of the word of God. With the leadership of our national head, the youth have been spotted from even from the interior. They've been our parents here in church, our bishop and bishop. They've really supported us emotionally, spiritually, and any kind of way they could help us. We've started a Bible school also for the pastors, but during the Bible school, we allowed the youth, uh, young graduates and young people who want to learn to be part of the Bible school. They were there to serve, um, they were there as administrators, they were there to help with uh, cooking and serving. But more than that, they sat in the classes, they learned the lessons with the pastors, and we feel that um, that is also a very good way of, of, of training and teaching them more about the church, more about leadership, and more about ministry. We have sponsored some of the youth leaders to the Pensa Ghana Conference to go and study and come back to help us with strategizing uh, in the way forward. These are our pastors, the elders, the deacons, and the dignesses of the glorious future of our church. Should we not invest in them? Their pure and innocent hunger for the Lord requires the spiritual and logistical response of dedicated and intentional leadership. Then the future will be more glorious. Possessing the nations is God's agenda and He's not done with us. The nations have opened up and as we obey, he will place us on seats of influence where we can transform the nations. I'm praying for a day where we will see our members take possession of the spheres everywhere they find themselves. We have been preaching about possessing the nations. That is, our members taking the spheres for the Lord. And as long as we keep talking about possessing the nations, our members will respond. We are really going to enter into areas we, we never imagined will be. I wouldn't be surprised one day we get a Pentecost president. That one, I wouldn't be surprised. The key positions we may capture. In some of the nations, we have parliamentarians. For example, in Pakistan, we have parliamentarians who are in our church in Pakistan. So we are in parliament, um, we are in the judiciary, we are in the military. If you go to the Americas, we have chaplains in the military. UK, the Lord has also opened the door for us, for us to enter with chaplaincy into the military. And we are entering into every other space that the Lord is giving us. Indeed, we are possessing and influencing every sphere of society with kingdom principles. We have done so much, but there is still more to be done. God has more to do and more blessings to release when we obey. When God sent us to go into the world, his plan was to use the resources he has blessed us with. This call to invest in the nations is not a call from men. 
it is the Lord calling. One day, nothing else will matter. The only thing that will matter will be whether we said yes or no when he needed us. We want to thank you all for your support to the Church of Pentecost and its missions agenda. Thank you very much, Area Heads, National Heads. We want to bless you, pastors, for the role you have been playing. And my friends, the officers of the church, our strength, we want to thank you for the role you play. So far as the Church of Pentecost and our missions enterprise is concerned, thank you very much. Time membership is praise for what you have been doing for the church. But we want to ask for more because there's a lot to be done for the kingdom. So please give and give bountifully so we can use it to advance the kingdom of God on earth. Once again, we want to thank all apostles, national heads, area heads, district ministers and their wives, presiding elders, leaders at all levels of this glorious church for always standing by the leadership, I mean the executive council, as far as our missions enterprise is concerned. You've never failed us. Because of you, we are still conquering more territories. We pray that the good Lord himself will bless each and every one of you, right to the members, even the children yet unborn. Once their parents are given, we want to bless you in advance so that God, who is a covenant-keeping God, will continue to bless you from generation to generation. Last year, by the grace of God, we had Edda Prince Amwa of Kwadasu area who was supporting the missions enterprise of the church every month with 50,000 Ghana cities aside what he gives in his area and then his district and his church. And this year, he's continuing with this same donation. We want to bless God for his life. And that Dr. Nana Amutobi also donated a vehicle to internal missions. We have others who have also been donating items worth thousands of CDs. The human beings are our project first and foremost, but after that, where would they worship? That is why church buildings are important, and musical equipment are important, and we solicit your support that you can help in this area to purchase church properties in nations. It also helps us to register the churches and to be in good standing in many of the nations that the Church of Pentecost has presence in. A family can adopt a nation, a church or a district can adopt a nation. Even a nation can also adopt another nation. All you need to do is to communicate with your superior and they will also communicate with the International Missions Office and will show you how you can do that. If you can go, your prayer can go. Some also call our missionaries on phone and then they encourage them. We want to encourage you to continue to do that. Give towards the missions enterprise of the church. If you can pray, pray. If you can encourage, encourage. If you can give a phone call, give a phone call. All these to the benefit of the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless you. As I stated last year, you should know the amount you paid last year. And if possible, double it because the fields are white and the harvest is waiting. Whatever you also give to support the kingdom business by supporting the missions enterprise of the Church of Pentecost are adequately and prudently used on the field. The nations are audited. Missionaries account for their stewardship. And we want to promise God and want to promise you that your resources are in safe hands with the Church of Pentecost and will continue to use them to the glory of God. So brothers and sisters, we have said that Macion's Missions Week is the mother of all weeks because this is the Great Commission. This is the mission for which we have been called. And so we want to appeal to you, just as you have been doing in the past, to give and give bountifully because there are many places that we still have to touch. And if you give us, we will go. So please give us and give us much more so that we will be able to carry on the gospel, we'll be able to carry on the mission, we'll be able to get to places where Christ and His Spirit wants us to go. Saying yes, Lord, gives eternal value to the resources in our care. After all, He is the one who blesses. 
We are only stewards. So together, let us say, whatever it takes, we will give it. Whatever the cost, we will pay for him. Whenever he calls, we are ready.